Show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys welcome, and boys and girls, welcome to Fool Auto with, uh, I guess I got to say, Professor Rambo. Actually, Paul and Professor Rambo sounds better now. So I'm going to go Doesn't with it? Paul and Professor Rambo. Prof and Paul? Paul, oh, Paul oh, and Prof. Oh, oh, it was Professor Rambo and Paul. Now you changed it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm changing it because a friend of mine recently purchased uh, a 1911. And uh, I have been able to hold the 1911 and experience the 1911. So by extension, it's almost like I have it. Although, you know, boating accident, I've lost. But, but still, because of that, I think it warrants switching it from Professor Rambo and Paul to Paul and Professor Rambo. I think that's the only thing. What you're saying is you have a bigger gun than me. My, yeah, well, not me. My friend does. And uh, my friend has a bigger gun than your friend. It's a five inch barrel for a handgun. Oh, so. dude, that's I, for a white guy. Five inch barrel is, <laughs> will suffice. And it's a black and green we, gun. Ew, you might want to go and get a <laughs> yeah, shot for that. I, I should probably go and get a shot. Let's let's go right to our first story, which might be our only story. I'm not sure. Okay. I have a feeling that this is going to be uh, the bulk of of what happened. So first of all. As, as you folks know, something happened today that uh, was pretty dramatic. Uh, I would call it an escalation in the rhetoric in a very real sense between the progressives and the conservatives. Uh, gentlemen, and I use that term loosely, went to the ballpark where GOP congressmen were practicing getting ready to play a bipartisan game of ironies. They're getting ready to play a bipartisan game, you know, playing the Democrats in baseball on Washington Nationals uh, Stadium. And uh, they are going to raise money for charity. <laughs> That's what Which they're preparing. charity is what I want to know? Some, some take care of disadvantaged people in Washington, D.C. There's a lot of this, well, I use that. Yeah, disadvantaged people in D.C. So it's kind of ironic that that's, that's what this guy uh, did. And he uh, essentially he opened fire on him. And uh, after a while, the police, the Capitol Police finally showed up. And four minutes. Four minutes. Uh, they said three minutes, but I don't know. Maybe it was four well, minutes. The person on the ground said it was three to four minutes that lasted lifetime well regardless three minutes of a dude standing up there so we're going to be looking at this from uh, uh, a number of angles i'm thinking that the order that we're going to go is the first order is well how could this have been different under <laughs> under circumstances in which everybody on the playing field was unarmed that might be a starting point, but what would you do in that situation? What, what is the best thing to do in that situation? And then I, th the second part is, what does this tell us about the, I call it the reality of power. That's my little thing I do. It's a thing I do. Uh, what does it tell us about the reality of power today? That this happened today and the reactions from conservatives at at all levels, from the low ranking, you know, the just, just the, you know, the hoi polloi conservatives to the high-ranking conservatives, and also on the other side, the Democrats, uh, how, the, how they reacted and, and what this tells us about the current culture in America today and what that means for you getting prepared. That probably will take up the show, I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, when you were talking about how much time it took, I was thinking about how many shots were fired. Uh, one police report said 60, 60 shots were fired. Got to be more than that. Um, so... If it's 60 shots over three minutes, that's one shot every three seconds. One, 1,002, 1,003. That's deliberate. That means this guy really sucks. Yeah. <laughs> he really. If, if, if in his shooting, what, he, what did he end up with? He ended up with two. A bullet in his head? Two, oh, wait. Sorry. Two cops that were injured. I don't know how severe their injuries Five are. Five total. Five total. Five total injuries, not counting him. Oh, that I don't know. Is it five? Maybe that didn't include. R regardless, you're talking, you had a room full or a field full of 45 people, and you had carte blanche, and you could only wound five people. Uh, I mean, it's it's good. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not advocating for anybody uh, killing anybody, but that, is, but that is some poor marksmanship. 
Well, yeah, but in my philosophy, more guns, more better. Yeah, I, I, I've been using that phrase today. I, I, I've credited you, but yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's well, a Dimitri, you. our uh, Professor Ram a Ramboism. Prof, prof, I, we got to come up with like a short term for it. Profism? Is that a profism? No, no. Ma just call me master, that's all. No, I, I will not. I refuse. Master. I refuse. I have a master's degree, so it's it's technically correct. It's not at all technical. It's not, there's, no, there's no technical or otherwise correct. It's in like that. a PhD. You call him doctor. I don't. It's the same thing. I would, even if you were a doctor, I wouldn't call you doctor. I would. I, you would call me doc. I'd call you mud, uh, probably. That's what I call you now. So, oh, <laughs> so uh, at any rate. Go ahead. What you were saying, I interrupted you, and I apologize. Not really. Well, more guns, more better. I yeah. mean, that's, two that, cops that's with it. two guns were able to keep him uh, pinned down, and he could not um, do as much damage as uh, he could have with what he had. If if I understand, he had an AK-47 and a handgun. We don't know what the handgun was. Yeah, but with an AK-47, even and, in semi-auto... And, and I'm assuming it's just your standard dude. AK, so it's probably 7.62 Thank by God 3 9. Yeah, but these crazies don't have the discipline to really learn how to shoot. Yeah, and how long will it be before they learn? Because I, think, well, they're, I think they're working on that. <laughs> I, think, I mean, they're buying the guns now, and they're like, they're still saying clips. When you start seeing them regularly say magazines, dude... They're getting ready, uh, and and I. Well, yeah, but the crazies, dude. The crazies, the people who are going to actually get into something and start hurting people in a serious way. They they tend to not think things out. They're they're not you know tacticianers. They're not. Um, tacticianers. They're not tacticianers. Tactic tactician? That's a technical tactician. term. They're not tacticianers. They're not tacticians. <laughs> I'm going with tacticianers. I will never. Yeah, let I you like the sound that. of that yeah. better too. Uh, and they're definitely not strategists. Errs. Strategists. Yes. So, um, they're just emotional messes that show up to a scene, and they think that they're going to start shooting, and that everyone's going to gather around them and cheer them on, like, "Yeah, you're doing, you're doing what we, everybody feels." about the situation you're you're actually doing it you're a hero that's the fantasy in their head right so um when they actually get shot and wounded and everyone's trying to kill them uh they start thinking differently well i don't oh, know i think some of them might be going in with uh you know suicidal you know i'm, I'm taking tendencies. one for the team man I'm going to my death will will bring down whatever. In this case, this guy is, he's a he's he's a Bernie supporter, which in and of itself doesn't mean anything necessarily. But uh, he's uh, it was he, he participated was in all the the the, the darkest conspiracy theories of how you could get rid of Trump and and my, there are two things that happened uh, with this situation that are disturbing to me. One, uh, I was perusing the newspapers and came across an NPR article, and and they said, uh, and now this is late in the afternoon when a lot of the details have come out. They're still sticking with a man with a rifle and a pistol open fire on these, you know, GOP politicians. Right. The language is been, very careful because it's one of theirs, so to right. speak. Right. So, so what? Uh, a nut job on the left opens fire and it's a rifle and a pistol if it's a nut job from the right it's an assault rifle right and a black pistol well with a 50 round oh, you, you didn't hear pistol. this there, there was a shooting another shooting that happened today in san francisco and it was it, i think it's workplace violence uh, three people dead the ups yeah it's i mean when, when we when you hear shootings these days you're like oh it's only three people dead it's i mean i'm, I'm just saying that's that's kind of how people feel nowadays it's, it doesn't rate anymore uh but at this press conference the i don't know who he was whether he was the chief of police or some sort of oh he was a cop it was a sheriff for the san francisco police department or deputy whoever he was probably at least a sheriff and he says he refers to an assault pistol. That is now a thing. So now we have assault rifles. Now we have assault pistols. So that is 
Mm. Nice. Hey, yeah, they're going to be going after the black guns of uh, assault pistols, probably. Which right. you know that that that, that doesn't but wait. exist. But wait, 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 wait. That happened in California. Yeah. Where there are no assault guns of any kind. No, there's permitted. there's 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 none. And this, I guess the Glock. Event, wouldn't the Glock 17? Is that is that, do I have the right number? Wouldn't that technically be an assault pistol? Oh, uh, dude, who cares? Because it's an automatic I'll, pistol, right? So you know what I care about? The fact that the incident in Virginia happened in a place where gun restrictions were pretty strict. The, the guy came from Illinois. Strict. He drove was from Illinois. For a drove from Illinois. Yeah, but he was living there for a couple months and scoping the oh, place oh, out. Oh, he was living in Virginia. I didn't realize this. Yeah. So, so he was he was in a place where he wasn't supposed to have guns. That's in, correct. I can't and, believe the, the gun laws didn't magically stop him. And then Weird. the gun laws didn't magically stop that person with the assault pistol. You know, it's interesting. In the gun laws pistol. did stop. Hey, right. The gun laws did stop a whole bunch of people from having guns. That right. They may very well have had guns that day. A whole bunch of people on that people. field, right, right. Uh, who, who could have protected themselves. But, you know, they actually obeyed the laws, and they didn't have the guns. They became victims. They were, I mean, it was, they were literally sitting ducks. At, but for the fact that this guy apparently either, not not such a, not, what did you, yeah, yeah, not, not such you a great shot. But. but, I mean, honestly, if you hit somebody with a 7.62, by three nine round, and you don't drop them and kill them, you're probably not a good shot. I'm not saying like it's like oh you know it'll just kill you dead instantly, but but if you have any kind of uh, good aim, any any kind of decent aim, and I, I don't know how I, I mean I mean you think about a baseball field. Uh, Steve Scalise, from what I understand, he was in uh, on the inner part of the baseball field, so. The extreme part of the inner part of the baseball field from the third uh, base dugout. Not that great a distance for your AK to cover and for you to aim with any degree well, of accuracy. Any rifle at those distances is, is spot it's on. It's pretty devastating. But, but I mean, honestly, if you're going to, if you hit him with a 5.56 five, at that distance, devastating. But a, well, but a 7.62 by 3.9. But this guy was. Bigger hole. I mean, one of the reasons why there weren't casualties is because one of the fences on the far side of the field was locked, and he was there at the fence, and he didn't think to shoot the lock off with the amount of firepower he had. He could have blasted the lock and walked right through and killed the rest of those people. So obviously this guy wasn't Not, really, not the smartest, well, probably. Well, he was angry. He was very angry from everything that we've come to understand about the man. And he was emotional. So he's not going in there like a professional who's not angry, who's cool, calm, and collective. Who could have done and, far more damage. Really, in three oh, minutes, a professional could have eliminated have? at least 20, 30. Would have. Dude, would have. At in, least 30. In or three minutes, he would have. the cops would have been dead. And everybody there, most of the people who were hiding in place, would have been dead. It's, it's a blessing that this guy was inept with firearms so i'm, I'm gonna play a part of this video uh just so you guys can see this is uh i think uh, a number of folks have probably already seen this this is the uh the cell phone video i'm gonna play it up to the point where they say something now uh, professor rambo you can't see this so you're just gonna have to trust me when it's done i will uh, I'm, I'm going to play it to the part that I told you before the show is going to play it to, but I don't want to say the part. I, I don't want. I want you to hear it for yourself. Sure what the horns are about. I th I think I hear bullets ricochet. Do we know where he's at? Do we know where he's at? He's behind home plate. You call that I'd like to think. 
I did you call 911? There you go. Already. There you go. Did you call 911? I'll stop it there. That's at the 53 second mark. Now, I don't know how long this video, obviously this video has been going on for some time, but even at that 53 seconds, somebody is now, they're, they're not here yet, but now they're saying, did you call 911? Do you ever be one, do you ever want to be put into a position where you have a gunman like that and, and you have to ask and you have to hope that someone called 911? Do you want to be in that position? I'm asking you, Dimitri. Go ahead. Oh, no, absolutely not. Uh, look, if I'm going to be a victim of a violent crime, I want to be able to punch the assailant that's trying to punch me, kick the assailant that's trying to kick me, or shoot the motherfucker who's trying to shoot me. I, I am not interested in waiting for help. I'm not. Um, These guys were in a situation where, because they followed the gun laws of Virginia, of correct. Alexandria, Virginia, whichever ones they were following, I, I'm sure I, I'd be willing to bet Alexandria's uh, laws are even stricter than Virginia's. That's usually how it works in cities. We've we've covered this, by the way, in past episodes. Yeah, we we. I I hope this is an impetus for Trump to create the nationwide concealed carry. Permit. Well, I, I did hear a couple of the Republicans who were in involved in it. Uh, I don't remember the specific names. I know Rand Paul was in it. I don't know if he's the one who said this, but a few of them uh, uh, had comments to the effect of, well, I mean, we were sitting ducks because nobody was armed. I don't think that they're coming out of this experience thinking we need gun control. I think they're coming out of their the experience saying, Mo. Mo guns, Mo better. Mo guns, Mo better. I think that's, I think that's the, the, the big takeaway that they got from this. These are folks that, uh, if, if you have it in your nature to actually want to provide for yourself, to defend yourself, to be self sustaining, self reliant, you will tend to want to have your own guns and 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 i'm not saying that you know a guy with a handgun should be charging a guy with an ak-47 to you know die you know in a frenzy of bullets uh, that's not my objective my objective is to oh the guy's got an ak-47 all right i'm gonna hunker down behind this barrier See? with my family yeah. or loved ones or fellow citizens and i'm gonna make it really hard for him to get to me right while, right yeah. Other people are doing the same Cause, thing. Because you understand a handgun and against a rifle, all things being equal. Correct. You are horribly outgunned. Even an intermediate caliber like, like the AK-47, as, as crappy as it is, uh, is way more effective, infinitely more effective than a handgun. Yeah, it's it's. I, it, There's no comparison. Yeah, if you get hit, I I mean, uh, take take Steve Scalise. He's he's hit. He's struck. As far as I know, uh. Now, I could be corrected later, but I believe he was only hit once. He's hit in hip. once in the hip. Now, I'm right. telling you, if he was hit once in the hip by a 9mm, probably he could run Way off before it, it starts to slow him down. Man, that AK round hit you, and it's like... Well, it, it dropped him. There's enough energy there that... Um, I mean, the AK-47 is in many ways comparable to a 30-30. And a 30-30 kills deer exceptionally well so a deer is a human size uh, animal in terms of weight allegedly. and if it what's that allegedly allegedly we have yet to see I've seen one, deer that look kind of smallish but whatever yeah so no, a full size deer is uh, 100 plus pounds so uh, and the really big ones can get close to 200 around these parts at least so um an AK-47 is a formidable round. It really is. Uh, and if that's what he was using, he probably dropped him with one shot. But then all hell breaks loose because the cops were there and they're like, uh-oh, shooting, okay. So they engaged the target and they pinned him down, from what I understand, near the... Uh, um, the third, third base uh, dugout, I believe. 
Is that where it was? Yeah, they, I, t- I mean, he, I, the, like the guy I reported it was here. Plate. The guy reported here where he was at home plate, but I believe he moves and then he's at the third oh. base dugout. I, that's what I, I believe happened. Um, not a hundred percent sure. E- either way, wherever they pinned him down, they pinned they, him they down. Pinned him down uh, right. And if you know why they pinned him down. Mo guns, mo, mo guns, mo better. You know, you're 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 gonna look at this, and and you're gonna what, what are you gonna say? Well, thank God for the police. No, no, no. Thank God that somebody actually showed up with a gun. It would have been better if police people right there on the ground, if a few of them had guns. And I tell you, when you go into when when you want to kill as many people as you want to kill, generally speaking. You are looking to find places where you know they're not going to have guns. The softer the target, the better. Right. So in your in this situation, if you have a handgun, then I mean, if if you have a if, if you have a, a rifle in your car, then you're going to use a handgun for suppressive fire to get to your car. But let's say. That, that's not likely. You're, most of us don't, even people that traditionally conceal carry or carry, they don't traditionally have a rifle in the car. So basically, you got what you got. You got a handgun. What do you, what, what do, you do in this situation? The guy's about, I mean, if you, you know, you're, you're in the outfield. The guy starts shooting from the fence. What's your move? What do you do? I'm asking you. Uh, ru- run like hell to cover. Before you engage. What about your friends that you know are oh. immediately in, in the crossfire? And just pretend that uh, you really can, like them. Uh, can I run faster than them or slower <laughs> than them? <laughs> so if it's you and me, you're running. I'm dead. Because you're, you're dead. a faster runner than me. Look, so I'm a dead man. Dead of, man walk. There's lots, of, there's lots of philosophies behind that. Uh, and, but you're dealing with a handgun versus a long gun. So his ability to get shots on target is something like 20 times higher than your ability to get shots on target, and, even if you're if, good. And if he hits you once, you're probably you're done. done. If you you're, hit you're him done. once, he's right. probably not done. So, you know, you can, if it's a gun to, it's a handgun to handgun, uh, and you're out in the open like that, you can, the only option you're going to have is to reduce the size of the target, which is go down to your knee, and... Take cover behind your gun. Well, remember what start... happened? What happened a few years ago? A couple of years ago at the at the uh, it was in Texas. It was involved. Uh, the uh, uh, I think it was an Islamist Houston. dude that showed up, and he was opening fire on what was that? You remember oh, that? And a, uh, a, Mohammed, a retired Mo- cop took him down. Okay, Mohammed drawing. Oh, that, that Mohammed. Texas. Right, right. And it was two guys, and it was uh. And they had. Soon to, and they had. They, they had, had Caltech sub two thousands. Well, one of them did. Oh, one. Of, I thought they both did. Yeah, and they, I think the other one had an AK, and they started shooting at this Mohammed draw Mohammed contest, and the cop had a forty five ACP, I believe. Yeah. A nineteen eleven. Hey, and he, good good choice. And he, and he dropped both of them. And what did he do? He did exactly what you're talking about. He made himself small, and he 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 went right after the target. Right. He, you know, so I you I'd can... say if you're going to engage, uh, you know, in a in a, like there's two approaches here. One, if you decide, listen, come hell or high water, I have to try to take him out. Then, then you need to make yourself small, and you need to run towards him, and you well, need you to can't. Shoot. Well, there, look. And you need to weave it, or whatever you got to do. But. Right. You, there's different ways. But in that situation, I would not be charging the target. Not with a handgun against the, an AK. If they're gangbangers on the street and they're trying to rob you or they're, they're – whatever the scenario is, if you, if you charge them, uh, you'll, you'll freak the shit out of them because they're not used to aggressive tactics. I think that might have worked in this case turn, with this guy. You're going to make them turn and run in a situation where you have, and that's usually handgun to handgun. If you're in a situation like this where you're handgun to carbine, dude, charging the target with a guy with a carbine is, you know, your odds are not so good. Um, In this, uh, what, look, 
I don't know what the hell I would have done. I think the smart thing. I to would do have to would really to, love you to charge that guy. I, think I mean, the smart thing to do if, is to run. If my daughter, as many. Okay, you're in the directions. outfield. Your daughter is in the infield. You're charging at that point, right? Yeah, I'm going to charge him until I'm dead. If my kid is there, right, dude, I, I, I'll be. I'm going to be dropping rounds on the guy. I'm going to be charging him. Yeah, if it's my kid that I'm trying to get out of harm's way. But if it's your geo, if, if your fellow GOP congressman and you like him, and maybe you went to his house a few I would times, say run in opposite directions. You, you get, you know, spread the target out as far as possible. Make it hard for him until you get to some kind of cover, uh, some obstacle that he can't shoot through, which is. Which has to be a pretty substantial target with a with a carbine of that nature. Yeah, you know that's how I. I mean, I I don't know the details. Like, how many people stayed hunkered down? How many people just? I I would have worked immediately. Like, you, I would be trying to get out of there as fast as oh, you possible. Have to. You have I, to. I I wouldn't be messing around again unless Dude. it was like some dearly loved one, Dude. like my daughter, my wife. Dude. The studies are very clear. In an, in an oh-shit situation, the person who freezes in place trying to figure out what's going on is usually the guy who dies. And that's that would probably be me because I'm always like, what's going on? I want to see what the scenario is before I take action. The people who are crawling over other people to get out of, let's say, an airplane that's sinking in the water or burning, those people who are hard chargers, they're the ones that always survive. They have horrible guilt for stepping on people's heads to get out of the plane. But they're not waiting for the guy to be polite and let the guy get out in front of them. They're pushing through. If you're going to sit there or stand there in an open field where a guy is shooting at you with a carbine-length firearm, uh, your chances have diminished considerably. You got to run. You got to get the hell out of there. Yeah, that would be the and first priority in that people, situation. Get out of there. A, and if it's like, a e even of, if you have a handgun, right? And I'm, I'm, yes. I'm agreeing with you. Even if you have a handgun, if you're facing a rifle, unless there's some loved one that you just have to die for, you get the heck out of there, man. Yeah. And, and every person on that field should be grown up enough to realize and, that's what you need to everybody, do. You need to scatter. Yeah, and, and the, here's the thing. You don't know how you're going to respond because you and I don't sit there and train on a daily basis on this. Right. I got some friends who are ex-rangers and ex-special forces who, when they hear a pop, they they already start moving to it. You know, in their minds, they're already, like, you can see they, they turn on. And and they have the training that, that says move to the target not away from it. Right. As peons, as civilians who, you know, play weekend commando, uh, we can speculate all you want and all we want, but the reality is when something goes down... Yeah, we're only given thing, what you should do. We're not necessarily yeah. saying that even that we would do it in that situation. Right. I made, like, just... Maybe maybe all of a sudden, for some reason or another, I actually, you know, even though I hardly know these guys, I feel compelled. I, I got to protect them. I'm charging in. I don't know. I don't think I would, but I might. Yeah, I think more realistically is uh, I think most people's sphincters would dilate just a little bit. There would be that. There would be and that. They they would either freeze or run. And I think that that's a more likely scenario for most people, uh, most normal human beings. Um, people who have, are combat veterans might not respond so quickly. Uh, they may respond in a in, in a way that um, they've been trained, which is take cover and shoot back. You know, one thing I will say on this video, something that's probably worth noting, uh, this guy is hunkered down. He's behind the fence. It's pretty clear that he could run away. I would say the reason that he's not running away, okay, there's that initial moment where it first happens where you probably have a window to run away. Because there's a whole bunch of you. But once that initial moment is over, if you haven't left, don't try. Because now... Well, that guy's hunkered down and looking for targets. Yeah. And now that all of the chaos is over, if you're the only thing moving through his field of view... He's got you. Yeah, uh, unless unless this, guy, this guy apparently is a terrible shot. But 
Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, it would seem appear unless we get more information that shows why he, he did so thankfully why he did so poorly. Now, moving into another direction here, and that is, I, what have you, what have you seen from the responses? And I, I want to focus on the responses from the GOP leadership, the GOP friendly media versus the Democrat leadership and the Democrat friendly media. What have you been seeing so far trending on either side? Um, where do you begin? Uh, okay. Look, I, I have no horse in this race. I'm not a Republican and I'm not a Democrat, but not, I, neither am on I. the second amendment on the second amendment. I'm and much of the constitution, uh, as horribly flawed a document as that is, as it is, uh, I stand pretty strong. And if the Democrats were to have been targeted by a nut job from the right, um, the media would be all over the Republicans. N not not the entire media, just the well, pro-Democrat media, which is basically which is not, what, 70, maybe 70, 80 percent, maybe 90 percent, uh, maybe. I would say it's 90 It's a ridiculously high number. Right. And they would be lambasting the president for, you know, using uh, terminology that was denigrating to people. Well, they're actually doing that. They're, they're doing yeah, that. Yeah, they're inspired. They're I, I know that. that. But, they, but it would be his fault that all of this is happening. Um, but because it's somebody on their side, the, their side, their side, I'll put that in quotes. Yeah. They didn't even mention on NPR that it was an assault rifle or assault, assault style. That, yeah, rifle, yeah, that's like what they're they doing now. They're doing now. They're yeah. doing assault style rifle, whatever yeah. that means. They, they, they're not even using their own terminology to identify it. Uh, so it's duplicitous at best, their behavior. And I, I am horribly, horribly disappointed in the Republicans that they are not doing to the Democrats what the Democrats you know would have done to them. Instead of coming out charging with fists swinging, they're saying, well, you know, uh, even talk show hosts, radio talk show hosts are like, well, you know, the only person you can blame in a situation like this is the actual gunner, the, the man pulling the trigger, right. the crazy who's doing this. You know, uh, they're they're blaming your president, idiot. They're blaming Trump, the guy that represents your party for this. And you're saying you can't blame anybody. Why wouldn't you go on the offensive and start going after these Democrats who have been using incendiary uh, 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 tactics and words and comments and ideology to attack the right? They are... There are comedians with uh, in images of with Trump's decapitated head. There are people who are in the governmental institutions who are saying Trump is not my president, and we will be. Well, I, I think we that's actually a, a more resistance. powerful thing. More more powerful than the comedian is when when you have uh, members of government saying that they are part of a resistance. You use oh, a word absolutely. like resist. I don't care how you may equivocate what you mean. That word resist has that has revolutionary, violent revolutionary connotations within the context right. of a you know there in, are, in a political context. There are shows on Broadway they're depicting Caesar, Trump as Caesar and stabbing Caesar. I mean, you still have people calling for his um, for his removal from office. I mean, invalidate the election. And, and th this guy actually this is, signed a, a, it had 31,000 uh, people petition and it's like declare the, the election illegal. It's, so what, what does that mean? This is the dynamic that the left has created in the United States. And the, res the response from the right, well, we can't blame those people. They have their First Amendment rights. You know, we, we have to do things by the book and you know, we can't judge everybody. We need to come together in peace, love, and harmony. Dude, are you fucking retarded? This is all out. They're 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 coming after you, uh, 
and, and you want to play peace, love, and understanding. They want to destroy you, and you're and you're and you're here saying, "Well, we need to, you know, look at this through, you know, calm and collective eyes and assign blame responsibly." Okay, you do that. So, so the, you, you play that game. So, you're you're going to lose it. So the way that I see it is a little, maybe a little bit different than what you do. Uh, I I'm looking at the tiers. I'm looking at. Your what is your average self-identified right winger saying? What is your average self-identified right winger conservative? Whatever, you know they're in the right camp. Uh, what is your average uh, leftist saying? Self-identified leftist, whether they're progressive, whether they call themselves progressive, liberal, whatever it is, and and then look at well, what are the mid-level folks saying? These are the folks that you know they have some degree of leadership. Maybe they're in the news media. They're a respected figure within the activist community and then at the highest levels these would be your your politicians your your top ranked uh uh media personalities what are they saying well, what i've seen so far at the at the at the at the rank levels at the rank and file level the rhetoric is the same on both sides the the violent rhetoric the rhetoric that invalidates demonizes uh, the other that I believe is opening up doors for more and more people to find quote unquote justification for taking violent action against the other because of their political views. I see that now on both sides at the lowest level. At the mid level, I see there's no difference in the Democrat side between the mid level and the low level in terms of the hateful, demonizing, rhetoric that is opening up pathways to justification for violence for political uh differences and at the mid-level of the of the on the conservative side i see i see a bit of a drop off i see some of that rhetoric that that uh at, at the mid-level but it, it's a bit of a drop off the the mid-level uh conservatives don't sound as frothy as the rank and file conservatives do but at the top levels, and this is to me what's, I, for, at least from my perspective, I, I have no interest in seeing any kind of, of civil war emerge. Uh, I don't think it serves my best, best interest at, well, at, at all. So this is why it's disconcerting for me. I see on the Democrat side, the leftist side, they, 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 all, all across the board, from bottom to top, they all sound the same. It's, all, it's that same level of frothiness that's going on amongst their media personalities amongst their political leaders the, the, not all of them that that are, are 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 engaged in this rhetoric but it's as widespread at the second tier and the top tier as it is at the bottom tier and meanwhile on the republican side i see see very you see some examples at the highest level of this type of frothy language and i want to exclude trump from this although for me i personally think trump uses some frothy language you can't deny that i don't think you can deny that but but the but the but 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 pretty much most of the conservative leadership they're not engaged in this frothy attitude and actually they're engaged in apologetic attitude they're 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 bending over backwards to be under uh, to be uh, to I, I conciliatory? think conciliatory and I think what they're doing maybe they think that they're keeping calm but I actually think that they're having the opposite effect that because the lower levels are starting to look at the highest levels in the in the on the conservative side they're starting to look at the highest levels at the conservative side and say dude you're not representing us. Dude, you're you're not you're not willing to face the reality around us, and there and the reality is that within the right and the left camp, whatever you might say about what their differences really are or really aren't, they perceive rightly or wrongly, and I think rightly, that there is an existential difference between the two of them, and they cannot coexist. Now, is there is there is there is there a way for them to come together that doesn't involve uh, civil war doesn't involve separation. I don't know, but I don't think you're going to get there if you have the leadership on the conservative side basically sounding feckless. They they sound like they sound like uh, uh, you know uh, 
what's his face? Chamberlain. They sound like Neville Chamberlain. Peace in our time. That's what they sound like. Right. And the rank and file GOP. I mean, it, it's spreading. They're 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 sounding more and more frothy. And the <laughs> the conservatives want a Churchill, not a Chamberlain. They, they want a Churchill, and and they want a champion. And I'm I'm not sure if it's too late or not. Uh, I think it's well, worth a chance, but uh, but honestly, this should have happened a year ago. The leadership on the right should have held accountable the hateful, I mean, really, really over-the-top hateful rhetoric that that has been coming from the highest level in the in the in, in the left. Instead of making apologies, instead of trying to be civil, social shaming needed to happen at a grand scale. Well, and, and my fear is now that. This action is now motivated some on the right to say, hey, you went after our boys. You know, you, if this keeps happening, payback's coming. Mm -hmm. So if, if <laughs> the, the seed was planted today that it, within the minds of some at the lower levels that our boys are being attacked and we have to defend them. And uh, I hope there isn't a tit for tat. I hope some nut job from the right doesn't say, "Well, we got to kill some some Democrats now." And and it's going to be indiscriminate. <laughs> it's it you're you're and more than likely you're going to end up targeting an innocent person rather than someone who really is doing. It's always the innocent that pay for the pay the price of stupidity and movements and big ideas. So for me, when I look at this and I see the rhetoric that is going on the left and I see the rhetoric that's going on the right, and, and I want you folks to be clear, I don't believe that the world is left and right. I don't exist in either of those camps. But for all practical purposes, overwhelming majority of people in America who are engaged in political discourse identify as either on the left or the right. But when I see the dis when I see what has emerged after this shooting, and I hear what the GOP leadership sounds like, and I hear how the low-ranking uh, conservatives are reacting to that, and then over here I see I see Terry McAuliffe comes out. This is a day. This is this is Donald Trump's birthday today, by the way. Donald Trump's birthday, and you had a Democrat. A Bernie Sanders supporter go to a baseball field and shoot one of the top ranking Republicans on that day, less than two, three hours at most, that that shooting occurred. Terry McAuliffe goes out and immediately starts to talk about gun control. And this is one of those fundamental divides between the left and the right that's very real. The right does not want to give up their guns, and the left absolutely insists that you give up your guns. So on that, at that moment in time, one of the top, I mean, Tyree McCall, he's, he's in the Hillary camp. He's, 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 he's one of the leaders, and he's out there. And he's unabashedly, unapologetically, he's got his foot on the neck of Steve Scalise, metaphorically, right there. No, no problem. He decides he's going to. This is. Th that's a bad sign. Yeah, dude, this is going to have a radical change among the Republicans at the leadership position. I don't think so. Uh, no, no, no. The ones who are getting shot at are not going to kowtow to gun control. They wanted gu more guns. Uh, and I think this is going to have a radical effect on Trump. It, when I heard Trump speak today, I heard an emotionality in his voice that I've never heard before. I heard flatness. I heard... Oh, you did? I heard a generic speech. Generic speech for sure, but I, I, there were a couple moments where I'm like, oh... This got to him. This really got to him. And now that this got to him, he's going to be on fire. Uh, I believe that there's going to be, and and the, I don't think the Republicans are going to be behind him. I think he's going to want to crush people at this point. He's, I think, 
if he hadn't taken the gloves off before, I think this may be a motivator to say, you know what? Fuck all y'all. I'm going to bring this whole stupid house down. This is this is insane. You're shooting at people. At, okay. At, at this point, I believe that if if the if the Republicans had done what I'm suggesting maybe 6 months ago, that there was a possibility that this could have been headed off at the pass, but while while you had people that were rioting violently, uh, you had uh, the rise of Antifa, and Antifa. I mean, it Antifa is a really there, there's a lot of different groups in Antifa. They're not all alike. But and, but, but the, you the, point out point out this imp this is important that you have equivalent groups on the right. Oh, absolutely. As Antifa. Oh yes, so and, and that's not, a, that, yeah, yeah, absolutely, and. And and you got these groups. You got on one side. You got the folks that are saying, you know, if you're a commie, helicopter rides for you. And you got on the other side, if you're a Nazi, you get punched in the face. And I get to decide if you're a Nazi. And I get to decide if you're a commie. These these guys have been engaging. The the the, the that has been ratcheting up. You look at what happened at Berkeley, the so-called Berkeley battle, and what you had was. The 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 mayor of Berkeley allegedly, and I strongly suspect it's true because he actually has ties to some of these anti-fog groups. The mayor of Berkeley allegedly, when things started to go south for that uh, free speech protest, he ordered the cops to stand down. What kind of message does that send to everyone? What it sends it sends is. You know, one of the primary roles of government, one of the primary legitimate roles of government it, uh, is is providing for self-defense. That's 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 what folks who support government, that's like one of the core things. Without government, we'd be Somalia, as they say, or, or, or Mad Max. So when you have your own government that's actually, because of political reasons, they're not willing to intervene to stop one group from violently attacking another group, that's, that, that, that sends a real message. It sends a message to the groups that are attacking that, hey, we could do this. We're not going to be held in check. And it sends a message to everyone else. Holy crap. We got to rely on ourselves. We can't rely on the government to protect us, which in and of itself might not necessarily be a bad thing. But in this context, I think it, it probably is a bad thing if, if that's your, if you're operating within the the government is legitimate perspective, that's a bad thing. If people who believe that government is necessary believe this government isn't protecting them, that that sows more seeds for revolution, not just from the left but from the right. So now you got a position where if Trump can hang on and he can vanquish all of the assaults against him. That's going to put the left in a oh, we got we got to do something. We got nothing to lose. If the left wins and they vanquish Trump, they they impeach him and then convict him or whatever the case might be. You know, they win big in 2018 and they and they start and they're going to move, man. If as soon if and when they get power again, they are going to move like big time. I I so personally as an think independent, we got about 2 an, years left. Yeah, as an independent, who do you fear is more power hungry and willing to use power against the citizens to advance their ideological agenda, the left or the right right now. I, I, and, and I don't mean the people that are in power right now that represent the quote unquote right. I mean the next generation of right that's coming. Yeah. At the moment, I, I, I have more fear about the leftists in this country doing stupid shit than I do the right wingers. Well, I, uh, I, I, I believed that for a while, and I, I think that I, while well, I believed it, it was right. But I think the, I think the climate is changing, and I am seeing, me personally, I am seeing rhetoric from the right that is very much along the line of, you know, if you're not in line, you're, 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 you're done. You will be physically removed. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, but that's the lower echelons but, of the right. But I see it, it's starting to work its way up. Um, I, I'm not so sure. I I want to see the upper echelons of the right wingers 
take Boulder Stand. This upper echelon that's there right now, it's not going to be there for long. Either it will be gone or the people at the bottom will simply leave it. That's what's going to happen. It's, 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 this is untenable at this point. They are fundamentally not representing the, the, the lower groups. No, they're not, and they haven't. And that's why Trump won this election, because the people on the bottom said, we need a champion. We, we need someone who is not a lawyer who's running for political office to you know, line his pockets. We, we want someone who's already rich, who doesn't need the money, and doesn't care about the political system. We want to tear this fucker down. Tear this mother down. That's what we want to do. We want to tear this mother down. And I'm, okay, I, I, I don't think tearing this mother down helps me. So, so I'm not for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I feel like when Trump got elected, that people who were, you know, constitutionalists and Second Amendment advocates and First Amendment advocates had gained some breathing room um, against the hardcore internationalist progressive socialists who have kind of taken over the country. And uh, I don't feel that way anymore. I I feel like the situation has really we've actually seen the depths of the incursion within the government from the internationalist socialists um, and it's worse than everybody believed well it's not worse than I believe, but it's worse than, than, than what most people believe. The one, the, one of the things that I'm enjoying about all of this is, uh, and I'm, I'm not saying I enjoy a lot of things, but I do enjoy this aspect of, of what I see is if, if you haven't caught on to the brutality involved in the, the power struggle to control 300 million people, uh, then you're not paying attention because it has been laid bare. And, and this brutality has existed for a long time. It's just been polite. It's been under the surface. It's, you know, you're glad handing in public and you're, you're, you're bringing the knives out uh, behind the scenes. Now the knives have come out and now the, 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 the curtain has been ripped away. You know, instead of seeing the wizard behind the curtain, you're seeing maybe three or four wizards that are battling each other to the death to be the one. That's what I think you're seeing here. You're, and, and, and to a certain degree, I kind of believe, I mean, I call it a course of enterprise, but I call it a course of uh, business. And you said, hey, enterprise is better. So I changed it to that. Uh, so, and you're right, it is a coercive enterprise. So it's, it's, it's a business and the business goes through periods of time where there's the, where, where power is consolidated and you have some stability. And then you go through periods of time where there are different factions that say, no, 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 I want my turn. What you're witnessing right now is there are a number of high level factions that want the reins and uh, they're there's a lot of manipulation that's going on. The, 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 the factions that, that believe that the conservatives will help them, the factions that believe that the progressives or the Antifa or the alt-right, they're all whipping up their, 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 their partisans and vying to be the new king, the, the new secret king from within that you never see. That's how I'm looking at all of this. And from a very pragmatic perspective, uh, I mean, let, let, let's get to that. Uh, that being said, what, I believe if, 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 if you don't have a network of people that you can rely on, it's not too get late, one. but you're running out of time. And, and I'm, I don't want to seem like I'm saying it's inevitable. This is absolutely going to happen. There are things that there are just too many factors that could happen that none of us could foresee. But based on the trajectory that I've seen and my understanding of the history of revolutions, we're heading towards 
a violent upheaval in America that will either result in a new regime or new regimes. And during that transition, there's going to be a lot of chaos. So preferably, it would be nice, unless unless you're one of the partisans, and God help you if you are, shame on you. Uh, if you are, unless you're one of the partisans, preferably find a network of folks that all agree, hey, our goal is to either hunker down, if we can hunker down, or get to a safe space out of the crosshairs of the partisans. Got anything to add to that? More guns, more better. That's the thing, man. Mo guns, mo better. Well, and there's a caveat there. That might be. It is. I know that I titled this show here RBI's GOP AK 47s and you, but I think the YouTube version, I think I might say it might be Mo guns, mo better. That might be the title of this show for the YouTube you version. You know what? I think Dude, that is. we should rename the show Mo guns, mo better. Oh, the whole show. We're going to rename it from let's full auto it. to let's start. Let's start fresh. Let's let's cons let we'll consider that. Actually, it's on the no. table for those of you that regularly Wait, listen to the show. How it's about we call the, it? It's on the table. The title is full auto. The subtitle is more guns, more better. That, that's a possibility too. We'll we'll talk after like the that. show. We're we're not going to um, plan out our whole show on but, air. You know, unless you really want to, which that would be boring. The the scenario that keeps playing through my mind over and over and over again, when, when I think of what the progressives are interested in doing, is Katrina, and how they sent the National Guard out to retrieve people's guns. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, what the actual... And, Why? And, and, and What is the end game there? And we've mentioned this a few times on our on our show, and we'll mention it again, because it's one of the most outstanding, How? horribly outstanding moments in American history. How do you At go into from a gun perspective? where looting is rampant and force citizens out of their homes to and to give up their firearms? How are you the guy that goes along with that if you're one of the soldiers? How do you do that? As, How do you follow those orders? How, as Realizing a that you officer, can't go protect these people. As a commanding officer, how do you give that order? And that is why I have no faith in the right, because they're just going to do what they're told to do. And, because they're and law I and order that, type folks. Correct. And if, if the president at the top is a diehard Marxist who's giving these orders to the military, the military will implement those orders, just like the boys that uh, implemented Stalin's orders and Hitler's orders and Mao's orders and name all the dictators of the 20th century orders. And I have no faith on either side of the political spectrum. All I know, and I will keep repeating this, is more guns, more better. And when they come for my gun, I will hand it over. One bullet at a time. Right. And when I'm done handing over my bullets, then they can take my gun. But until then, that's only fair. I, yes. That once I I will not, and I mean I will not hand over my firearms, and I won't let my neighbors be bullied into doing that either. And I'm pretty sure that people from various political affiliations would. Uh, stand in the way of of crazy stuff happening, uh, but I'm not gonna bet on anybody or anything. You must create networks of people. It doesn't have to be far and wide. It just has to be people who you can rely on in your community. Yeah, with it for whatever. With, with, at the very most. Within a twenty-minute driving distance at the at the outs, yeah. at, at, at and, the outer and edge. you know where a good place to start is, your church, your synagogue, whatever religious or, place you. Or if to. you're not religious, uh, wherever you ha wh whatever club you belong to, whether uh, I don't know. If, if, if you're part of a shoot, well, if you're part of a shooting club, you're probably already a little Dude, bit ahead. If of you're the an game. if you're an atheist, I guarantee you, you're on some network and some forum. With a bunch of atheists talking about whatever, uh, I'm sure there's an atheist club near you. Get together with those people, whether they're atheists or theists, and find out what you guys have in common and how you can help one another out. 
I can't emphasize this enough. And this is full auto. We should be talking more about guns, but oh no, this is about guns. That, no, what? no, full auto is about self defense with yeah. a gun focus. But oh no, this is absolutely relevant to the idea of what, what what it basically comes down to is if you're going to sit around and 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 hope for your partisans to protect you, don't. You need to prepare for yourself. And and again, I'm not saying it's inevitable that that this is going to happen i'm just saying it's 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 it the, the the trend is increasingly in a direction of some sort of violent upheaval uh well i mean to me that sounds alarmist but i'm actually I really temper, trying not to be alarmist yeah. uh, <laughs> but i temper that i temper my initial inclination to say well you're being an alarmist with at what point in American history have we – does this duplicate or simulate? And the answer is there aren't a lot. There aren't a lot of points in American history where the United States is so divided. And you're right. There is an existential difference between the left and the right that is going to be very hard to reconcile. Even though they both have – remarkable similarities that they're willing not willing to face and uh, but the the differences really have to do with uh i mean some fundamental issues i i actually think that guns is one of those divisions one of those key divisions between them is that the left wants uh an unarmed land and the right they they haven't they haven't swallowed that pill <laughs> they haven't they haven't taken that one ask the German Jews, how it went for them after they were disarmed. Ask the Russian peasants. I can't. None of them are left under Stalin. I can't. None of them are left after they were disarmed. Ask the Armenians can't. how well it went for that. I can't. None, them. none of them are left. Yeah. Well, very few. Well, I'm just being life. hyperbolic there. Okay, you're ruining but, my yeah. hyper hyperbola hy my hyperbolic so, uh, rhetorical device. Yeah. Ask ask the Native Americans who were disarmed how well it went for them. I, after I, they I can't. Were none of them are left. Although there yeah. are, but whatever. Yeah. It doesn't so, go well. It doesn't go well. If no. it, it, you you if you understand, if if you look at the world through the prism of the reality of power, you have to understand that when someone sees that, well, when entities see that it is of low cost to them to take from you. They're increasingly more likely to take from you. If they see that the cost is high, they're increasingly less likely. I call this basic, this is the cost of coercion. So if you want to create an environment in which a small group of people are the only ones that have lethal force. The, the government already has a monopoly of force. It would be, uh, I don't know if the, what, what is beyond a monopoly of force. Well, and actually, they don't have a total monopoly of force. Here, they would have just about a total monopoly of force. If you think that that is somehow going to create a government that is going to be more just, that is going to be less corrupt, you are living in a delusional world. And it's all because you listen to them cry, boogeyman. You listen to the scary numbers that tell you that, well, you know, if they if they don't disarm people around me, somebody's going to kill me. Your chances of being killed by uh, somebody with a gun uh, infinitesimally small compared to driving a car. <laughs> you know, we drive cars every day. You, you're, you're way, I don't know the exact statistics, but you're incredibly more likely to die uh, uh, behind your car driving than, than you are on the other side of a gun. Uh, you're much, I mean, you're, you're at least half as likely, maybe more, to, if you're going to die from a gun, it'll be because you did it to yourself. <laughs> so because of your fear, you want to empower a tiny group of people to have absolute control over force over lethal force that's what you want and you somehow think that's what's going to get the government to be just and fair good luck with that there you you're just going to you know what 
it'll look like it'll look like uh, you're a bunch of people playing on a baseball field and you're unarmed. Except there's one difference when the guy when the guy shows up to decide that he wants to pick off some people for whatever reason, he's not even going to have to fear that any kind of cops are going to show up because he is, he's all of that. That that's what you're advocating for. And that is why in, in part, at least that is why so many people on the right are, they're fundamentally opposed to you. They will not go gentle into that good night. I, for one, will not go gentle into that good night. I will not. And and you're not part of the right. I'm not even part of the right, but that part, on that front, I will not go gentle into that good night. No. no, neither will I. And on that note? And I am not technically part of the right either. So, um, yeah, I just, you know, the more I think of the scenarios that can unfold, uh, it doesn't look good. And I don't want to sound like an alarmist either, but the president has to step up and start acting like like the boss. And the next time somebody blocks one of his presidential orders about immigration or what have you, he needs to send the feds in there and have that judge arrested and say, you will be held, uh, you will be held accountable for any American who has been hurt by an illegal immigrant or a terrorist that makes it onto the ground. And you will pay the same penalty that they do. So if they murder someone, I'm holding you directly responsible for that action. They, they need to start busting heads. I'm sorry. They, they, uh, it, it has gone far beyond what is normal when, in, when a rink-a-dink judge can, can stop the president. It's not the Supreme Court weighing in to stop the president. It's any bullshit court. That can stop him. I, I I don't think that the fundamental problem is with the courts. Whether you disagree or agree with the oh, court decision, now the fundamental problem is that no real action is being taken against people who are actually, uh, uh, overtly promoting violence and performing violent acts. That's where the real problem is. It's not the well, I don't I think yeah, that if Trump did what, those people? I, I think if who's Trump I, I, I think if Trump did what you were talking about, I think it would just infuriate the left even more and it Good. I don't It's time it's time to go after them. I just like they go after think, if you, dude, if you want to avoid left, a civil war, that's not no, the path. I I disagree. In order to the only way to avoid a civil war is to root out the people in the IRS that targeted conservatives. Well, that's true. To root out, that, that's that's to true. Root, but that's that to, to uh, go after them, a judge. A judge soldiers. making a decision isn't isn't the IRS corruption. The, a, a judge that, that that's it's not the same part. level as an IRS. It's not the same. Target. But it emboldens it emboldens those people who feel that they have to resist. Now, you don't need the to go after the judges. You you need to go after. You need to go. I agree. You need to go after the IRS operatives. You need to go after the folks that are doing all the leaking. You need. You need to go after when when you have a. Uh, uh, you know again. Well, when what, the person who's leaking is the director of the FBI. You need to dude. You, that that need you need to go after to that guy. When, that guy needs to be in jail. When, when, the IRS, the leadership in the IRS has to be in jail. When, when, the judges who are impeding the president from, uh, from doing his job should be in jail. I, I don't, I don't to, agree with jail. you with the judges. I think that. Oh, I do. I don't. I don't. I mean, that's. I, I, they're wait, obviously wait, wait, not independent wait, judges. They're, they're, it their doesn't positions matter. Are they're, they're, yes. Well, you can't avoid it. You can't avoid the political. And it, it is within the constitutional framework, such as it is. I mean, you you actually like the Constitution somewhat. I So within your framework, they haven't broken the Constitution. There's a process that you go through. The judge makes a decision, and then it works its way, its way up to the Supreme Court. That's a process. You're talking about delegitimizing rule of law now i tell you there is no rule of law there's no rule of power but be that as it may that that perspective of rule of law is in the, itself a reflection of power dude, the left delegitimized rule of law with the last administration so oh my god the breaches i mean to have to have the tarmac meeting between uh lynch and clinton those two people should be in jail not walking around uh doing whatever they're doing 
These people should have been arrested and a criminal charges should have been brought up against these people. Well, I agree with but, that. I, I, I totally, I mean, so, there's all kinds of folks that are doing stuff that within that, your parameters that we're talking about, not my, but, but, but the, you know, the state parameters, there's so much, a lot corruption. of folks should be arrested. And, and you know, it's part of Donald Trump's problem is that he, I mean, where's the indictment of Hillary Clinton? Remember when he said, I mean, that was like, to me, that was, I think that was one of the, the it's key. It's not just her. It's not just her. Well, it's, well it's her she's, a, she's, she's a major figurehead, like the major figurehead. When Donald Trump has a debate with Hillary Clinton, which which I think was not the turning point, but one of the turning points, it may be the turning point. I'm not sure. You, uh, when when she's talking about oh, how ridiculous it would be uh, if he was in office, and he said, yeah, because you would be in jail. And then... Where, where's the indictment of Hillary Clinton? Instead, what happens? The 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 GOP they they put uh, Sessions in as as the Attorney General, and at the at the first whiff of any type of scandal, Jeff Sessions makes the the politically suicidal decision to recuse himself from the Russia investigations, a lot, knowing that if he does this, the next person that's going to take hold is a Democrat operative. Who then proceeds to to appoint a special prosecutor? That's that's not how you fight wars, folks. And that's what you have on the right. You have, I mean, at this point, I'm like, that it's got it. They they, they, they they don't want to win. They're part of the they're part of the left at this point. You got to wonder. They're part of the of left, course. but the problem is they haven't been able. To bring along the rest of their of their partisans dude, with them, the partisans are like, dude, bought, we ain't putting up with this. They're bought and sold. The right has been bought and sold for quite some time, and they're mortified of the media. Trump is not mortified of the media. He's not mortified of the media, but well, I, I guess I I, I do want to say in his defense, I'm not a. I'm not huge on defending Trump, but in his defense, it was not his decision for Jeff Sessions to do this. And apparently he was absolutely livid at Jeff Sessions for doing this. So Donald Trump basically. Why on earth wouldn't he? But he's the one who appointed fire. him. He selected yeah. Jeff Sessions. So that is on he him. He should have shit canned him immediately. You're recusing yourself. Get the fuck out of here. You're done. Who's next? Right. I, I, you, I, you, I, I think that what Donald Trump suffers from is. Uh, he has an Absalom problem. The Donald Trump, uh, if you remember the story of David and Absalom, Absalom did some bad things, and David didn't didn't act decisively to to bring it to bear. And and Donald Trump has his own Absalom. This guy's name is Jared Kushner, and Jared Kushner has has an unseemly hold on Donald Trump's ear. And I I have little doubt that that it's 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 moves like appointing Jeff Sessions. That that's Kushner at work, so so Donald Trump has an Achilles heel, and it's his daughter and her son-in-law. There, I've I've said it, and because of that, Donald Trump is fighting with. And I'm not sure that I necessarily I, I don't necessarily know who I want to, to. I don't want I don't know I want anyone to win a total war to total victory. I, I'm not sure, but if you're rooting for Donald Trump. There's your problem. Well, I am not rooting for Donald Trump. No, I'm not. I'm thinking the general you, but not you. What I am rooting for is that the people who breached the confidence of the American people and the laws of the land so openly, so why do you think they now why do you, why do you think they haven't been prosecuted? I know why. why. Because they're power no because they know where all the dead bodies are and they all got a bunch of dead bodies all of them have a bunch of, of dead bodies if they go after too many people too many things are going to come out in the open and you're going to start to realize just how corrupt uh well, dude, how, how it all is talking about guns you know the the kid who was a bernie uh supporter who did the data dump who was working for the uh, Democratic National Committee? Seth Rich. Yeah, he he got shot in the back twice, and from some accounts, he made it to the hospital just fine and in good shape, and he mysteriously died in the hospital. 
I, so I don't, I don't know much about that. Yeah. So uh, whether he died on the street by shooting himself in the back twice, or something horrible happened in the hospital, dude, it, it, that tells you everything you need to know. They took him out. It. The political parties took him out. It would. This is it the would America seem you live in highly today. likely. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I don't. I, I don't generally uh, wade into conspiracy theories because I don't find them very Dude. destructive. I don't need a Seth, Seth Rich conspiracy theory to understand the nature, the ruthlessness of, of the parties involved. Correct. And they're willing to destroy you any way they need to to get you out of their way. They'll prop you up if it's in their interest and they'll they'll destroy you if it's in their interest and that right. that at the end of the day is 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 what it's about, and I, I I think the jig is up, the jig is up for the left, and I think the jig is up for the right, and I'm just afraid that what I see emerging, rather than people coming to realize, dude, there's got to be, e even if there's some sort of of state, uh, uh, there's got to be a better way. That's not what you're seeing. What you're seeing is no, we got to go harder. We got to be more ideological. We got to, you know, we got to, we got to root them out. You know, I've, I've seen glimpses of the ugliness of the right. And I'll tell you, don't ever, don't ever question their police. Don't ever question their flag. They'll, they'll kill you over stuff like that. Uh, so. They're just as vicious. They have their own sacred cows that they will kill you for. And it's so. just getting worse. When, God forbid, if something should kick off. More guns, more better. More guns, more better. Wait, but for a specific purpose. You you mentioned it earlier. It's not because you want to go to the front lines and fight that fight. Not me. Nope. Nope. No, not you specifically. I mean, you as a general. Right. You. It's because you want to use that to get the hell away from the chaos that pursues. Yeah, if, if you happen to be in a situation where you can hunker down and defend yourself well, great. If not, you need to get to that place. Yeah, you need to move and get away from the chaos because both sides are going to be wrong and you should not take sides. And they're going to be applying loyalty tests and purity tests and they're going to be killing their own. It's not going to be pretty. Yeah, stay away from the chaos. History has shown that those who can dodge and maneuver are the ones that, who, are, who are part of the group that is left standing and tend to flourish afterwards. And those who are at the front lines with their stupid ideologies, like the Stalinists and the... And the um, well, now we got, the, Nazis. We got the, the nationalists here and, and, yeah. and, and like hardcore nationalists. Like, yeah, those yeah. those folks you need to stay away from for sure uh, from both sides. And, and do we have anything optimistic to leave? I, 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 I have something optimistic, and that is uh, – Oh, I do too. As all of this is going on, there's all types of technologies that are emerging that it's going to make it increasingly easy – for people to be able to provide for themselves from 3D printing, microfacturing, from the blockchain and the possibilities that uh, offers to a whole myriad of technologies to mesh networks. They're, they're, the technologies are enabling individuals, free associations, small groups to, to be empowered to actually not just, not just survive, but thrive without dependence on large-scale systems. So I don't think that genie's going to go back in the bottle. So even if we go through a period of chaos, there is there is light at the end of the tunnel. Well, and th part of that, uh, and you mentioned it, uh, for me the most important thing is information. Um, no one has control of the information anymore. Uh, and that is what is driving, and that is what, determined that la the, our last election. Uh, those people who controlled the media were certain that all of the stuff that came out about Trump, whether he was grabbing them by their pussies or whatever it was, 
he didn't have to rely on them. It was it's it's over for them. I mean, they have a, still they have a disproportionate amount of control of the, over the stories that are coming out, but there are ways around them, and Trump proved it. You can get information from all different kinds of places now. You're you're not beholden to the system. Um, unfortunately, for the most part, the places that you can get information from, just as partisan, just as uh, agit proppy as as the mainstream media. There's very 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 few plain truth telling going on these days. Yeah, but that's fine because both sides are getting their propaganda out. Yeah. Yeah. Both sides, all sides. They're ginning up left their partisans. Side, left side, right side, upside, downside, three quarter side, half side. It doesn't matter. You can you can go out there and you can look for information. One of the websites that I look for and read regularly uh, had a headline in it today about the event that took place today, and it says the guy who the shoot the shooter was a never Trumper. <laughs> Wait, what? Right. And this is actually on the anti media website. I, I generally yeah. I like anti media, so I'm a little surprised at that. Yeah, and, and I said, say what? A never Trumper. Do, do you have your terminology straight? Because he was not a never never Trumper. He was a Bernie guy. Um and the never Trumpers are Republicans who don't want Trump in office. This guy wasn't that by any stretch of the imagination. So I read that and I said, oh, that doesn't jive with what I know. So I went on and read something else. And then I read something else. And then I read something else. And I got a pretty good picture of what I think took place. And I watched the video footage. And I was able to come up with conclusions that didn't fit any one narrative in particular. But I was able to wade through all that and say, ah, here it is. Here's the truth. I think I, think I got it. Right. Yeah. I mean, well, the truth is out there. Yeah. So <laughs> if you're just relying on the New York Times 20 years ago, that's all you had. Dude, that was that was like it for information. I mean, hell, if you remember 20 years ago, there was one or two um, databases. I think LexisNexis was one of them where you could, you know, go on LexisNexis and compile all of the different articles by category and by, uh, you know, subject and keywords, and you can collect stuff that was produced, you know, in the media all over the country through one database. Uh, that database is no longer in some Ivy League tower uh, controlled by the gatekeepers as to who's going to get access to it. Um, now it's available right on your laptop I, I think it's about time to wrap this up actually it's yeah. it's over time to wrap, to wrap this up i think we went a little long on this show but that's okay that happens we're kind of animated yeah we're kind of animated and I, you know my animation is really about okay this is a game changer what does this mean does it mean that i have to step up my preparation uh and i think uh I think yeah, that's what that's what it means for me. It means I have to I have to step up my preparation, and I'm not saying anything is inevitable, but I would definitely rather be prepared and be wrong than to not be prepared and be wrong. Well, I would leave like to leave you with another Demetriism, uh, words of wisdom from the professor, because this will help too. More money. More better. That is that is actually the key. And on that front, uh, we're gonna say goodbye here. I I don't know what we're gonna do next week. Maybe we'll have Michael Cessna on again. We haven't had him on a while. He's about to. Yay! And and we'll come back to the conversation that we originally were gonna have this week. It'd be good to have Michael on with us. And what then are we gonna have? We're we're gonna talk about Europe. We're gonna talk about the uh, oh. what, you, what if you live in Europe right now, what should you be doing? And so the first part is gonna be well, what's going on in Europe? And there's world events that are uh, that are at play for us to look at. And and then uh, after we look at that, then we'll talk about well, if you're in Europe, what, what is it that you should be doing? Uh, I don't uh, you know. Good luck getting guns, but you can. You can get guns. Dude, they're and, everywhere. And you should. So uh, on that front, uh, join us next week. Uh, 
yeah, next week we'll be on. Uh, we're going to have to be on at least uh, my Monday or Tuesday at the latest, because I'm actually getting ready for next. Uh, the the uh, I leave next Friday. Me and Andrew Marich, we're gonna uh, along with my daughter, we're gonna make a uh, a road trip. We're going to Michigan. We're going to the the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. I will be speaking on Sunday at the Pavilion at the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest in Delton, Michigan. And I'll be speaking about power, the nature of power, vis previs, power, individual, individual power. And on that, on that, do you have any last? Oh, oh, and one last thing. Oh. To, to find our stuff, be sure you go to istv.me. That's where everything is at. And this show will immediately, well, yeah, more or less immediately be posted on there as well. Go ahead. Your last. I will be also speaking. I will be speaking to my children tomorrow morning about cleaning their rooms. It's a, I will be. Are you going to YouTube dude. it? I think I have to. You're gonna have to. I have to. I'm looking forward to that. Um, and it's gonna be a a scream fest for probably like two days. It's gonna um, be awesome. It's gonna be very. It's gonna be awesome. Intense, very intense. Uh, that said, Irini Kaya. Say it again. Irini. Irini. Kaya. Kaya. Irini Kaya. Irini. Irini. There you go. Ke. Ke. E. Ke. 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 No. Ke. 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 Peace and health. Peace and health. And we'll see you. We'll see you sometime next week. And stuff. And stuff.